Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and this is the Road to the Record, where I work to achieve mastery of 10 games in a hunt for the best score of the Decathlon. If you like what you see, remember to hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Let the games begin. This is Pro Cycling Manager 2018. I'm into week 34 of the competition. And we got a few things going on. Uh, first off, Congratulations, Garrett Thomas uh, just won the Tour de France this last weekend. And the game itself, some new updates, all good stuff. Uh, might talk a little bit more here over the course of this episode uh, on the Tour de France. Uh, so if you didn't watch it, uh, do find it, uh, at least find highlights it. There are highlights available uh, on YouTube if you haven't seen it. Uh, it was a fantastic tour this year. Very exciting stuff, but let's get to the game. Uh, first up, I have a new contract for next season. So in season three, I will be moving on to the world tour for education first so Team EF, Education First, Drop Pack, uh, Cannondale. The, the team with a million sponsors right now. The longest name in the sports, but Education First uh, is where I will be taking my talents for next year. It's a two-year contract at 20000 a month. So we are moving on up. In the meantime, my fitness, eh, 85%. But I am fresh. My tiredness is back below 50% after uh, climbing quite high uh, during the last episode. As we are getting fairly late in the season, it's mid-August. However, my manager happiness is down to 77%. Not so good. Uh, we'll see what that plays out as as we go forward. Whether I get the job of team leader or I'm going to be stuck working for the team. I have just leveled up once again. I'm now an average of 76. That's getting to that relatively competitive level. And at just 20 years old, that gives me uh, great potential for the future. Mountain up to 78 now, 77 on the time trial, accelerations at 69, downhills at 68, uh, the stamina, the resistance are coming up and recovery is fantastic at 77 right now. Uh, that stamina still needs a long ways to go if I'm really going to start winning some uh, tours though because there are far too many stages where I drop off earlier than I could, far earlier. Uh, so that that's the area that's going to really need some improvement in the long term. Uh, and we need to get a little bit better on the flat uh, for that same purpose. Uh, we can see that I am by far the highest rated uh, racer and... Uh, Freddy Aguirre is the only one who's near a fitness peak heading in. And a quick look at the briefing for the Tour of Utah. Uh, so stage one, a bit of a hilly one. Uh, long, steady uptick uh, for the bulk of the 135Ks. We'll definitely tire some people out and leave them behind. Uh, but considering we're probably not going to ramp up the pace until somewhere near the top, uh, I expect most of the peloton to make it through this first stage just fine. Uh, stage 2, also considered hilly, but not really. Not much going on there. Uh, however, stage 3 is where we're going to first see a small group uh, make it through. But a long downhill section uh, will definitely lead to a sprint at the end among those who survive. Stage 4 is a sprint one, but it definitely undulates a bit. Uh, stage 5, another sprint one with a, a heavy set of climbs and a category 1. That's just a short, steep section. Surprised it gets such a high uh, 
category, here's where the tour is really going to come apart. Uh, stage six, two big climbs with a mountaintop finish. And stage seven, an all category climb uh, before a shorter uh, and pretty steep descent. And this one will definitely split it apart to determine the winner. Uh, looking at Fitness Peak, I'm definitely up there, but I still have the uh, the fatigue part. So my race day condition is minus one, uh, despite a decent Fitness Peak. Uh, the fatigue is bringing me down a bit. Uh, will that be enough to really, really hurt me like it did in some previous races? I don't know about that. I should be competitive, but whether I'm competing for a win, not so sure. Uh, Pierre Latour is coming to this race. Uh, Slagter. Uh, let's see who else is going to be here that's a competitor. We'll see here in a moment. Uh, Damiano Caruso. Uh, Darwin Adapuma. Like Team Astana brought a few. Uh, Luis Leon Sanchez, Omar Freire. So there are some definite world tour, not huge names, but bigger names. And yes, I do get leader outsider category. Uh, they want me to finish in the top 10 of the standings. Get to the front where I like to be. It looks like I have Nathan Brown. Uh, to shield me and we are going to make a cut forward in time here uh, towards the upper part of the climb and I'll see you uh, as we head down the descent hopefully still in the main group I've skipped on to stage two uh, stage one very uneventful uh, the climb really only separated a few riders. Uh, likewise, this stage has only separated a small number of riders off the back, uh, maybe 10 or 15. Uh, what this stage has done uh, that's been different has been a very, very intense chase, uh, which is what did the splitting. Uh, the climb literally only dropped one rider who's... Uh, probably 30 minutes back and likely not going to make the time cut. Uh, beyond that one random uh, rider, you can see here that there's constant accelerations uh, as we are chasing down the breakaway group. And that, as you can see, has really done some damage and continues to thin out uh, the peloton more and more. It's down to about 60 riders and I was on my own for a long time. Here I am uh, at a 90 uh, struggling to stay near the front of the pack. So the stamina part, uh, which I was talking about at the beginning of the episode, may yet be a factor. So we are 8k from the finish. Uh, the breakaway group is now just 40 seconds ahead. They are still eight riders strong. Uh, things look like they might have settled down just a little bit on the attacks, but uh, they have been fairly relentless. Here we go again. Luis Leon, uh, Sanchez, uh, Jesus Herrada uh, attacking again. I'm not looking to go with any of these attacks, just stay near the front. Uh, if somebody does happen, I'm going to get a few seconds, then they happen to get a few seconds. Uh, but meanwhile, I want to just make sure that I make it to the end because I don't have much left in the tank here. Uh, we are down to 2.5k though, and there's only one rider left off the front, just a few seconds ahead. So that, too strong, too strong. Easier, easier. There's the finish. Now attack. Uh, I managed to finish 14th in the first stage, and it was a breakaway rider who won. Simon Clark gets the win today, a second or two ahead of everyone. Uh, Harada second. Uh, Frele 
And then Caruso, seventh. There's uh, Latour is 13th. Slagter, 16th. Uh, I was just outside of the top 20. Uh, I should still be somewhere around the top 15 in the standings as of right now. Uh, breakaway group technically won stage number one. Uh, three riders just a couple seconds off the front. They ended up being given the same time. Uh, but that breakaway group hung on its split in the last couple K. And the three strongest uh, sprinted it out. Uh, for the win while everybody else sprinted to catch their back wheel uh, right at the finish line. Okay, here's all those stragglers coming in late. Uh, I managed to finish 23rd here on the stage. Heist finisher for my team. Here we are at the base of the climb. Stage number three. This is where things are going to intensify and I'm starting with a significant disadvantage. I had a puncture got dropped uh, from Peloton by the time it got prepared. Nobody stayed with me. Uh, I suppose I should have slowed somebody down to help and bring me back into the group. And the pace was actually pretty high, so I spent a lot of energy uh, catching back up to the field. So a little bit of a mistake on my part uh, to not uh, bring some teammates back to support me. But the moment I was out of the group, I no longer had control of the teammates uh, in order to drop them back because I wasn't in the group to give them orders. So we're on to the climb. And technically I would be one of the favorites, uh, but that is far from being the case now uh, as I'm starting half uh, stamina compared to everyone else. So I'm going to have a difficult time. Uh, there will not be an attempted attack from me as I'm starting uh, majorly disadvantaged from everyone else. Luckily I have my best climber Nathan Brown along with me at this point uh, shielding me. But with all this climbing to come, uh, if there's any attacks like right next to me there on my right side, uh, number one Pierre Latour is the best climber here. If he attacks, I would not be able to go with him. Uh, I'm seen as just an edge outside favorite going into the stage, uh, ninth, and we'll, we'll see how that holds. Uh, we are almost two minutes behind the breakaway group, but I saw them not so far ahead too long ago, so uh, this is definitely a lengthy and slow climb, and woo, <laughs> we all popped wheelies there. Got a whole field of Peter Sagan's all of a sudden. Alright. Fatigue is starting to catch up to everyone else, but you can see like Nathan Brown, uh, Guire are still doing quite well for themselves. So you can see uh, just how far off I am. Now we can see that where I'm doing better is that my heart rate is steady at 140. Uh, and my teammates are all in the 150s, 60s, and 170s struggling. And that's why they are getting fatigued and I am not. So I'm actually recovering a little bit here at the moment with the pace. Uh, but really I'm just kind of holding. But that's fantastic news if I am to get over the top uh, with the group. Uh, meanwhile, the peloton is starting to shrink. There are some riders off the back, just 86 left. Uh, we haven't really gained much on the breakaway at this point either, though there they are, just a little ahead. Uh, but I'd definitely say the main contenders today, uh, Astana, BMC, and uh, AG2R. Uh, but Latour is certainly the favorite to uh, win this race. I don't think today is going to separate things a whole lot, especially when we are uh, a long ways up the climb already. Uh, you can see just how far up the climb we are. Uh, but the steepest sections are about to come. And there's that first split. Nope. Not yet, not yet. No split yet. 
But I just slid back a little bit as we went over the top there for no apparent reason. Oh, I lost my helper. That uh, could be part of it. It's not giving me control of Brown right now. Oh, he went to get water. Some teams can't be happy with the breakaway. This climb is feared by many riders. The percentages are very high. All right, well, Peloton continuing to shrink. Uh, we're only a minute behind the breakaway. What's left of it, it's getting smaller. Uh, but still no real intensity to the pace, and I've held on just fine here. Uh, but the intensity of the climb has definitely come up. Our pace has definitely come up, and so has my heart rate. So uh, this could be where things get difficult for me. Less than 1k to the top. I should be okay. Uh, Nathan Brown still has not made it back with uh, water. That's one slight concern. Oh, there he is. And he should be back to shield me now. Down to just Brown and Aguirre. Aguirre's just now coming back to the front. They're both on good race day condition. Here is the top. And I've done just fine. Only slightly less on the stamina than I was. Uh, but we really did not break up the group. I, I really thought that we'd be down to a group of maybe 15 or 20. Uh, just right at the top, though, the group did take another split. There were 50-something. Now it's 30-something. Uh, but I would imagine that 50-something will likely come back together. As this is a pretty long long descent uh, it will get steep but not just yet uh, if things change I'll see you at the bottom otherwise I'll see you on the next stage a couple developments before we head into stage six uh, stage four and five were both sprint stages uh, not too much of note there uh, Team Sky has now offered a contract but it's too late I've already signed with Education First plus uh, I would never get a chance as a team leader for a long, long time coming uh, if I went to Sky. And Peter Sagan is going to quick step. Huge steal for them as uh, in real life they've been winning so many <laughs> races this year. Uh, Terpstra, Thibaut Pinot. Now, this should be the final episode of Season 2 as I get through. It's still only August, but there's uh, a little ways to go in the season yet, but not much happening uh, down the stretch. Uh, so Pierre Latour, the heavy favorite. Damiano Caruso is the second favorite, and I'm that next best climber. Uh, however, my tiredness seems to now be having an impact as my race state condition has been pretty low uh, the last couple of days uh, so we'll see if I could actually hang with that top group uh, if I could do better than the top 10 that was predicted at this point I'm actually 12th overall uh, just through consistent finishes because there's been no tiny group there's still about 30 riders uh, left more or less on the same time with a few of the sprinting types that were okay-ish climbers uh, that have some bonus seconds here and there, and about 20 seconds over the rest of the field. You can see quite a few of us somewhere around that 77, 78 mark. As I'm given a bit of an outsider's chance today. start right away with a bit of a steep climb but we're already near the top of it finishing the top three on the stage really 
All right, right to the front. That was nice. Uh, race day condition zero. That should help. Uh, so I am a full 78 on the climbing today. Uh, no penalties overall, and I am full strength heading into this one. So, well set. Uh, I will see you somewhere around the second sprint point uh, before we go into the penultimate climb. See you back in a moment. Alright, so here we are at the sprint point uh, just before the penultimate climb. The breakaway group has three and a half minutes. And that is pushing it. Uh, the breakaway group have some riders that are close on time, including one that's actually still in that top 30 or so, uh, 20 seconds back to the leader, which is the same time that I am. Uh, so that breakaway group cannot be allowed to uh, take the win here today. And with that, we start the penultimate climb. Uh, many riders are already struggling. Uh, Murphy spent a lot of time uh, leading the peloton, so that's why he is quite fatigued. But you can see uh, the little bit of climbing that we've already done to get to this point. Uh, that uptick in elevation has quite a few riders already struggling. So uh, a lot of the teams are going to be down to their top climbers early in this one, especially the midpoint on this climb where it gets quite steep. Uh, I expect us to be down to a group of uh, maybe 30, um, maybe even less than 20 by the time we get to the top long. of this climb. Uh, you can see how fast they're dropping off. We are already down to 75 now, uh, and I'm right at the front. What's going on here? Am I sliding backwards? Okay, so I've got Aguirre protecting me right now. Brown uh, leading the peloton, leading that chase. I don't know why my guys are taking up those jobs uh, when I really think like AG2R should be <laughs> doing that. All right, here's the intense part. Percentages right now, 16, 17%. We're already catching uh, a lot of the breakaway group, and Peloton is already down to just 50 riders. Uh, I am fading a bit on stamina already. Of course, it's going to recover before the base of the next one. Uh, but I certainly don't want that to run out, so I don't feel much like attacking right now. Uh, it looks like we're getting up to a snow dusting at this point. Brown back on the front. Really, I'd rather have you just protect me. Peloton's down to 35 as we go into the last section of the first climb, so we're getting into here. Uh, it is pretty steep through here. Uh, you can see the steepest section right there. We'll be coming up on shortly. Uh, breakaway group has mostly imploded. There's just three riders left off the front. Twenty-four riders left. I still have Brown and Aguirre. If they can recover on the downhill, uh, if they can stay with the group, that's definitely good for me on the final climb as three out of twenty-four riders being from my team. Uh, it's about the best shape that I've been in uh, for a big climb like this. Uh, as they go to recover a little bit here, that's the top. Uh, as they go to recover a little bit, uh, I'm going to get Aguirre to get water bottles, not uh, going to the front. Alright, 
so it's ticking around 22, 24 riders, so looks like we're really at about 24 riders here. So it's noses downhill, which will allow okay, come the riders on, to catch their breath. Where are you? There you are. All right, so I'm recovering easily enough. Uh, this was more about still having a couple teammates with me for the final climb. Three riders still out ahead. Let's see who are they. Uh, DeVos, minute 18. 3.11 for Moser. Vermulen is 3.16. And they're back together. So DeVos is the only one to worry about, and he's minute 18 ahead or a minute 18 behind. Uh, so he might be just about virtual uh, race leader at the moment, but that shouldn't be a threat. Uh, so likely the stage winner's coming from my group, and almost certainly uh, the race leader will come out of this group. Uh, let's see who is still in it. Uh, Latour is here, Egg is here, Caruso is here, Harada is here, uh, Frele is here, uh, Winner Anacona is here. So there's uh, still big names, and it looks like a secondary group has actually caught up to us. That's not good. Uh, Aguirre is not really saving his pace when he's leading this chase. Brown's recovered a bit, but not all the way. You can see if these guys aren't recovered, a lot of these riders are not going to be recovered, especially the group that just chased us down. Uh, so most of them will be tailed off pretty soon. Uh, I've recovered very nicely and should be in good shape here for this final climb. It's definitely my chance to uh, get into that top 10 and hopefully into that top 5. 20k to go, and we're reaching the, the valley. We'll be going up uh, next climb here in a moment. The riders are going through a very tough portion with percentages above 10%. Okay, still in the valley. Uh, you can see just how steep the climb is going to get. Uh, not too far into it. That might be the time to go because it's very steady. And if you can keep a steady pace through there, and pull away. But I kind of want to have oh, my guys. As soon as I see them fade, that might be my time to go. Oh, flat tire for Moser in the breakaway. Uh, and we've just about caught those last two riders too, so they're no longer considered a threat. Guire's using himself up, uh, leading the peloton. Uh, AG2R is using up two guys, UAE is using up two guys, BMC is using up one. And we are definitely on to the climb now, though it's about to get a lot steeper here. Already, uh, I'm fading a bit, so we've got quite a bit of pace going in. I'm at 170 heartbeat uh, beats per minute, so that's uh, that's gonna have my energy fade pretty quick, even without attacking. Uh, Aguirre's done; he's out the back, so we're down to 35, 34. So one by one, the riders are fading away. Uh, as long as I still have Brown, which isn't going to be much longer, I will not attack. Uh, but he will fade soon. I'm right near the front, which is good. I think we're onto that steeper portion now. Oh, yeah. And Brown's just about done here. So. I'm going to look to attack. And couldn't get off the front on that one. It's 
let that energy recover a little bit. I didn't want to spend too much energy getting ahead, and I didn't end up getting ahead at all on that. I'm actually a bit weak up here, so maybe I'll just do well to uh, try to hang with these guys. Group's down to 19, 20 riders. There's Egg, Mark, and me. Ooh, down to six riders. The tour. Egg. Oh, no. Oh, there's the attack. There is the attack. And they keep on attacking. Anyone that's low on gas definitely won't be able to keep up. Come on. Come on. All right, we're down to 10 riders. And I, uh, uh-oh. 13 riders. Here comes Latour, he's gonna attack. I'm gonna let him go. Uh, I don't think I'm looking for a top here in the stage. Let those two go and try to pull for third as I'm pretty down to it here. Jail's helping right now. Keep me alive here. Latour is gone. He's he's so much stronger than everyone else. Looks like I'm competing for about fourth place now. And there goes the mad burst for the final sprint. <laughs> Wheel lease near the mountaintop. Not good. Alright, I'm going to attack with whatever I've got left. Uh, 0.5k to go to the top. See if I can't at least get ahead of these guys and finish. Looks like I'm pushing for about fifth. Egg gets a win ahead of Latour. Wow. Yep, run out of energy. So I did. I, I went at the right time. So I got fifth. Fifth is good. Uh, Latour second. Caruso third. Uh, Lachlan Martin fourth. I was able to break off my group and leave them behind, so that was good. Uh, and use every last ounce of energy that I had right at the line, so uh, so I did well to not attack with the others. I, I kind of wasted that attack early on, but I only did a little bit of energy burn just to see if I could get off the front. When it didn't work, I did good to uh, just hang in there till the end because I left a lot of top riders behind, and considering that I'm still Continental Pro, and not dominating by any means. I've only had two wins all year, so uh, I think a fifth place here amongst some big names uh, is fantastic. I mean, Sanchez was well back in 12th. Uh, Simon Clark well back in 14th. Slagter 15th. Uh, winner Anacona in 17th. So these are still big names coming in uh, minutes behind. Uh, Harada was ninth, Bue is eighth, Frele is seventh. Uh, so again, it's a fantastic job for me uh, to get a fifth on this stage. That's gonna go a long ways. I should be fifth overall uh, at this point. All right, let's get everyone else in. See where we're at standings. Look how spread out we are. It's half an hour already since we finished. And there's still some riders left to go. <laughs> 43 minutes to stop the time. So there, there's my attack right there as I leave my group behind. that attack once again so at least I was able to sprint and uh, gap those three and yes I did get a separate time so I, I was able to beat them out by 15 seconds in the end so that was really good okay and yes general time is fifth overall
second in the under 25s. Team is sixth. Here we are, final stage, queen stage. All category climb. Uh, we're already starting to go up a little bit, though we don't really start to climb till a couple K in. Huge, huge breakaway with a substantial lead. Aguirre's there, so I do have a teammate in it. They're going to start blowing up pretty soon as they are starting to uh, go up to the steepest parts here. Uh, Peloton's had some issues. Uh, I'm wearing the sky blue uh, Young Riders jersey as the overall leader of the race is the only one ahead of me uh, in those standings. Um, again, amongst the favorites today, uh, Peloton took a really, really heavy crash that took a bunch of riders uh, down and out, really split things up. I was actually in a group of four. Uh, with a couple teammates at one point thought about trying to use them to attack but we were just way too far out uh, it was still in the first 30 to 40 uh, percent of the stage Uh, the lead of the breakaway is down to three and a half minutes. We've already picked up a minute on them just since the base of the climb. Uh, and Peloton is beginning to shrink uh, down to 60 riders. Uh, I do have a minus one race day condition, and it is my stamina that is hurt. So while I've got good climbing, uh, I'm afraid to attack today. Uh, and evolution doesn't seem to favor those in the rear. I They're don't think that I'm in a terribly strong uh, position for that. Uh, just with this lowered stamina. It's so low to begin with uh, at 64. You take that away, drop it to a 62, and take a couple away on the resistance. And I don't feel confident. Uh, we are up over the steepest sections of the climb now. Uh, so it's going to get less severe, though it will get a little more severe at the top once again. Uh, but this is kind of the last uh, of the stronger sections right now. And then it will ease up a the bit. Uh, with still 37 riders, I think I'm looking pretty strongly at that fifth place finish. Uh, a little climb again at the end. And I think that's where I will try to attack, but we're up over that steepest section now, and we level off a bit, uh, just four, five, six, seven percent here now. I'm actually still looking pretty strong. Uh, maybe when it ramps up again, we'll see how I'm doing. I'm I'm actually recovering right now, so I I may attack yet. Uh, here as it uh, intensifies for the last part of the climb again uh, I might thinking about going on the attack there because I'll have that whole downhill to recover uh, just 35 riders left in the group and we are still six minutes behind uh, and here Attack. comes an attack Frele. I've still got brown shield in me so that helps All right, I am off. I am on my own. I have gapped the peloton for now, and I'm about to catch these guys. Uh, might latch on for a second here, and then go on to the next. The riders are entering the last 10 kilometers of the stage. Peloton's back with me. Up over the top. And I'll go right into recovery mode. Just 10 riders left here. Uh, plus two groups off the front. Aguirre is still in that lead group of eight, so he's got a good chance. Only five 
kilometers left. Watch out, a team leader is falling behind. Now it's a group of 12. Guire's in the lead group. And let's see, I've got Latour, Caruso, Egg, Harada. All the favorites are in my group. Guire gets third for the stage. So the breakaway group does survive, and we're about to go up our last little climb here, little left hand turn, and up we go, and I'm going to try to emerge out of this group. Nope, they're all on the attack and fresh. Just make sure I get the same time. Oh, sprint, 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 the line's already right there, gosh, that's not an uphill at all. We're all on the same time, though. There's zero gaps here. It looks like I will be just outside of the top 20 for the stage. Waiting for the back markers, who appear to be fairly numerous in this difficult race. Should still be uh, fifth overall, though. At least let's hope that there wasn't that high of a finisher in the breakaway. 23rd, final on the stage. Uh, I would have attacked sooner if I had known it was that short uh, of an incline to the finish line. It certainly looks longer from here. Looks like two or three K, not not a few hundred meters. Alright, so there's breakaway of eight. There was the two that trailed them, and my group was not very big. So let's see. Yes, I do hang on to fifth. Uh, no changes in the top eight, top nine. Uh, so no changes down through about the top 12. That's those breakaway. Uh, riders were all outside of that. Uh, Freddy was about eight minutes down, so I think he gained about three minutes moving him up. Second on the under 25s, and team took fifth overall. Not bad considering uh, that we finished ahead of Trek, Sigafredo, AG2R, uh, BMC, uh, all down the standings from us. So fifth, not bad. Let's see where we are over here. So overall very good, plus 33 progression. Uh, manager satisfaction was also there. Uh, so a couple good evaluations on that. Uh, we do have the Tour of Colorado uh, coming up next, or Colorado Classic as it's now called. Uh, with a sprint stage, a time trial, 15k, slightly uphill, a little bit of a hilly one, but that's really going to be a sprint stage as well. And how is that hilly? Where's the hill? There's no hills in there. Uh, so other than that little time trial, nothing going on for that one. Uh, it'd be really nice if we can come out with a win there, uh, but otherwise this is not the typical Colorado Classic of years past. Uh, it was really, really downplayed uh, last year and this year as apparently their funding has dried up a bit on that one. Uh, Gaviria is staying with uh, Quickstep. 
Uh, anyway, as I go to wrap up this episode, uh, if you want to stick around for just a second, I did promise that I would talk about the uh, Tour de France and the results there. Uh, great win by uh, Garrett Thomas. Good job by Froome uh, to hang on and actually move back up in the standings to get third. Personally, watching, uh, closely listening to interviews and watching the tactics played out, Personally, I think that it was Sky's plan all along uh, for Thomas to win. I would love to hear in the comments uh, if you agree with me, but here's why I think that. Uh, in the early stages, uh, Thomas went out on the attack, uh, looking to gain a few seconds here and there. Froome only attacked what, once the entire tour he was the target they said he's our leader he's our guy the whole time and everybody was marking him meanwhile thomas had an easy time and you you listen to the interviews and they had him on max peak fitness this year now why would you favor thomas over Froome? when Froome has won so many times. I think that's everything that's gone on with the media lately is the reason for that. Point being, there's been some negative PR uh, with Sky this year, uh, with Wiggins, uh, the ethical debate, and then of course Froome's drama uh, from last year. And I think that secretly behind doors, there was a discussion that went on. Of course, this is purely speculation. I have no evidence to back this up. Okay, uh, But I think there was a discussion behind doors to say that everything going on, it would be really, really good for the team and for the sport if Thomas won. Sky was so dominant, and I think that Froome wasn't as weak uh, as he looked in those couple stages. Because you look at him in that time trial, and he was utterly dominant. Uh, and Demoulin beating him by a second and a half was really peculiar, because they stopped the clock a couple seconds early on the finish line. Uh, on Froome. And I want to say that they did the same thing for Demoulin, but they didn't show that part of the replay. And I, I really should go back and rewatch that to see if they did the same thing on Demoulin. They fixed the time on, on Froome and added like two or three seconds to his time. I think it was three seconds they added to his time. But he was about a bike length from the finish line. That's not three seconds. That's one bike length. Uh, so it's really odd how, how that played out. Uh, and then all the computers continued to show that uh, Dumoulin was finishing behind Froome, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, Dumoulin wins. What just happened? Uh, it was odd. you got to watch the replays closely on that to see uh, what, kind of what played out there. But anyway, Froome looked really strong. He never looked weak. Yet he just kind of trailed off uh, there on, uh, what was that, 19, 18? Uh, anyway, something tells me, just just uh, my own little thing here, uh, that they wanted Thomas to win all along, and uh, and Froome to, to be kind of right there on the podium, uh, that this was his year, and that it was good for the sport. And it really was good for the sport. It was a great tour, uh, intended or not. All right, well, that does it for this episode. Uh, we're going to wrap up. Uh, Decathlon Gamers Season 2 in the next episode and maybe, just maybe get into the start of Season 3. So that does it for this episode. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe and tune in next time on my Road to the Record. Bye for now.